I'll just get the recording going here. Oh, thank you. Someone got that recorded. So I think we're good. Excellent. Well, thanks again, everyone, for your patience. Uh, my name is Holly Ross. I'm the executive director of the association, and uh, just glad to have you on this supporter call. We do these quarterly just to make sure you guys uh, know what's happening over at the association, what's coming up, um, and give you a chance to ask questions and um, have your say as well. So uh, let's get started with our agenda for the day. Um, so just a little housekeeping here. Uh, if you are listening from the, the computer or you are attempting to but you can't hear me yet, hopefully these, these words are helpful. <laughs> uh, instructions for you know how to listen from the computer. Um, folks do come on the line muted. That just helps us keep the background noise down. But we do want to be able to hear from you. So again, use that question and answer window um, in your control panel. Um, and you know feel free to throw things in there. Uh, or if you see the chat, the chat's fine too. And I'll be keeping an eye out there. So any questions you have that, that come up throughout throughout the call, we definitely want to answer them. So feel free to throw them in there. Um, and then also feel free to tweet uh, anything you hear that's interesting. Our handle is at DrupalSos, uh, and we're happy to um, you know, hear what you have to say on Twitter, uh, and also answer any questions you have that way as well. So there you go. So that's our housekeeping. Um, just a reminder about some of our upcoming events. Uh, we just closed down DrupalCon Barcelona, and we're still recovering from our ham hangovers, um, but we're going to take it in a completely different direction and go to DrupalCon Asia next in February. Uh, middle of February, we'll be there in Mumbai, India, um, and we're excited to get out there. Hope that you guys can send someone to join us there as well. The community um, across Asia, but especially in India, is so excited to host this event. Um, it's a really big community, uh, so it's definitely a really uh, interesting part of the Drupal experience and we're excited to get out there and um, help them celebrate their Drupal culture as well. Um, and then after DrupalCon Asia, we'll be headed uh, to DrupalCon New Orleans as our next North America con. Uh, so we'll be headed down there uh, in the spring and then following New Orleans, we'll be in DrupalCon uh, Dublin for our European event uh, at the end of September. Uh, so we're taking trivia back home, which we're really excited about. So those are our next three cons. Uh, but also just a reminder, since so many of you uh, run Drupal businesses um, and uh, get so engaged in um, Drupal training and learning, um, if you have that kind of component to your work, we definitely encourage you to get engaged with Drupal. Global Training Days. Um, that is a program that, um, you know, on, on a, over the course of 24 hours, um, once a quarter, uh, folks around the entire world uh, host global host uh, training events to bring new developers into Drupal. And so, uh, if that's something that you have done before. Thanks for doing that. You know, of so many people who've gotten their start in Drupal from 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 these events and. Uh, you know, it's it's a really great program. If you haven't done it before, it's really easy to get engaged. You can just uh, look for Global Training Days on Drupal.org. It'll it'll pull up the page, and you can learn more about it. Um, and our amazing uh, community uh, person Liz here would will help you get everything in order that you need to in order to host one. So, always lots of stuff going on, but those are those are the next big things. And uh, our agenda today, so we're going to share some news from the association. Um, we will talk about some improvements on Drupal.org um, and then some ways to outreach into the community uh, in marketing programs and, and Drupal jobs. Um, and then we have some exciting stuff to talk about when it comes to Drupal itself, which we're really excited about. So. That's our agenda for today. If you have questions about something you don't see on this agenda, again, feel free to pop it in questions. We can always um, take off-topics uh, discussions there as well and, and have those conversations. So that's the agenda. All right. So before we hop into that content, um, I just want to take a moment again and thank everyone who is on the call for your support um, as a partner um, in the association. And, 
we've been able to do so many amazing things uh, with the community um, for the project over the last uh, year, two years in particular, um, and that's really because these partner programs have grown so much, um, and the support that you're providing means that we are able to um, you know, host an engineering team that can do things like improve test bots um, and make sure that our, you know, our, our D8 core maintainers are able to actually put a product out, right? So, you know, that kind of work that's funded by you, and I just want to thank you guys for doing that, and um, hopefully what you hear here today is uh, a good indication of what all that support is making happen. So, let's start with some news. Um, and Rachel, you want to yeah. walk things through and just give me the magic, uh, you know, I guess you can't wink at me since you're working from <laughs> home, but let me know when you want me to change slides. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so yeah, we just had a DrupalCon in Barcelona last month, and it was very successful. We ended up with just over 2,000 attendees, which beat our expectations. It's a little bit fewer than Amsterdam, but with Amsterdam, we definitely saw a huge spike in local attendees uh, that could drive into the community. So we were really happy with the turnout uh, for DrupalCon Barcelona. Uh, some of the key highlights uh, was obviously Dries' announcement on Tuesday morning about a release candidate date. Uh, and we tried some new programming at this con, and one of the things that we um, tried uh, readjusting the format of was what used to be the community summit. Uh, we turned into a community kickoff and then had that uh, programming continue throughout the week in one of the BOC rooms. And so we had 44 people attend the community kickoff, which was a great start, and uh, Donna Benjamin on our board uh, kind of led the charge with that, uh, as, as well as Holly and uh, Adam Hill. And so that was really great to see them um, just kind of run with that and, and gather all those community leaders together in, in a space together. We also had really great feedback about our keynotes. Obviously, Dries is always ex an extremely popular keynote speaker, uh, but we got great feedback about Natalie Nahai, and um, we got really great feedback about the community keynotes, um, particularly um, how the, the topics really resonated with people, and ha also about how Mike and David uh, did a really great job of speaking in front of such a large audience. Um, Another thing that was really encouraging were the sprints. We had a really great turnout for the extended sprints, and on Friday sprints we had over 550 sprinters, which was fabulous. Uh, so even though we had fewer overall attendees in Amsterdam, I believe we had more sprinters. That's a great uh, sign of health of the community. Go ahead, Holly. Yeah, let me just, I'll just add too that if you missed any of those keynotes or you weren't able to be in Barcelona, um, all of the sessions are up on the association YouTube channel, um, and I'd say, you know, all the keynotes in particular are definitely worth watching. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a lot of really great um, uh, programming that was offered at the con, and so, uh, yeah, if you go to that uh, YouTube channel, you can see all the sessions there for free. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I had fun with the mute button there, um, <laughs> but I'm back. Um, so yeah, if you have folks have questions, uh, you know, about the con, definitely feel free to keep putting them in the in the Q A section. We'll um, we'll get we'll roll back to those if we if you have any that you want to pop in there. Um, but yeah, it's just a great event, and Rachel, you and your team did a, a great job. Uh, so thanks for thanks for making that happen. And, and uh, what's not in the slides, but I'll just say half the team got taken out by food poisoning at some point during Drupal in Barcelona, but they did such a great job that you never want to know. Things just kept sailing off, so <laughs> good job, you guys. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, one other program that we have been uh, running with uh, throughout 2015 is the Drupal 8 Accelerate program. Um, and this, uh, the idea behind the program is to raise $250,000 and use that money to help accelerate the release of Drupal 8. Um, and at DrupalCon Barcelona, in fact, just before Dries uh, went on stage, uh, we finished raising that $250,000. Um, and I know several of you on the call here today helped make that happen. So, you know, thank you for kicking in as individuals and also as companies that helped see us through to this goal. Um, I don't think this is anything that the Drupal community has undertaken before, so it was definitely an experiment. We weren't sure how it was going to pan out, but it was really exciting to see us come together to to raise all the money, um, which we did from over five hundred dollars, uh, five hundred donors. So that two hundred fifty thousand dollars came in in some really big five figure chunks, but also in five and ten dollar chunks from all around the community, which I think is really 
uh, a great representation of, of who we are. Um, and with that uh, $250,000, so far we've made uh, 60 grants. Uh, it's about $210,000 that's been paid out so far. Um, and what's really exciting to me is if you look at the reduction in critical issues over time, um, you can see where we had our first accelerated sprint uh, just at the end of 2014. Um, that was the first sprint funded by the association, and you can just watch the criticals tumble from there on out, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, and the core maintainers who have managed that grant program deciding where the money goes, uh, they've all been very positive about the effect that the, the money has had on their ability to get D8 out the door. We're really thrilled about that. Um, and they have a uh, little funding left to help clean up other criticals that might get raised during the release candidate stage. Um, you know, and into an 8.x um, release. So, uh, you know, this I just think it's been a really overwhelming success. We're really excited to see what it has done. Um, you know, and our next steps here will just be really talk about talk more about what the role of funding um, development is uh, for the project uh, as a whole, uh, which is a good, interesting um, topic with lots and lots of viewpoints to think about. Uh, and uh, speaking of which, uh, Kathy Faze had a session on that topic in Barcelona. If that's something that interests you, the recording is also up for that. So see what happens there, but big win. Another uh, big uh, piece of news for us uh, coming out of DrupalCon Barcelona, um, we are about to launch our first large-scale membership drive. Um, so we've definitely discovered at the association, um, the last couple of years we've done some surveying of the community and, and realized that there is a significant portion of the community that just doesn't even really know too much about what the association does or how we help support the community. And so we definitely want to, you know, we've been working on that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> want to overcome that hurdle uh, and really grow awareness about the association um, and, and help build that base of um, general membership support for us. So uh, we'll be launching on the 13th um, a membership drive that will run through, uh, you know, across Drupal.org. So you will see something that looks a little bit like this on Drupal.org uh, for uh, about uh, this, the six weeks or so that this campaign runs. Uh, so, you know, your mileage may vary. This, this is just a mock-up, um, and we're, we're putting finishing touches on, so you, we'll see a slightly different implementation, but this will just give you an idea. Um, the association's never really been that integrated into Drupal.org, so we're excited to see uh, what kind of awareness this raise, uh, raises and uh, you know what, what it does for our membership um, numbers. Um, when you click through, um, you'll land on ADO to do that membership, um, and we have uh, to process that membership, and we've been working with lots of awesome community members to get uh, great quotes from them and testimonials to share their Drupal Association story. Um, which has been really fun to hear those stories, and if you have one that you want to share, I certainly do um, encourage you to let me know. I'd love to collect that story and make sure that we can feature you and highlight you um, during this membership drive as well. So it looks like that. Um, like I said, it'll launch on October 13th. It should run through to December and uh, we are looking to uh, go from about our current of our current number of about 3,000 members um, and we're looking to add another thousand members essentially I think to that list. So. Um, lots of work to do, and we're excited to see that get done. So, it's a little bit of news from the association and things that we've been working on, uh, but we also want to share what's happening on Drupal.org. So, Josh, you want to tell us what's going on there? You bet. We've uh, we've had some exciting things in the last quarter. <clears throat> um, a couple of big things that uh, the team worked on were search improvements. I don't know how often you actually use search on Drupal.org. Uh, we managed to train users over the years to mostly use Google. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you use search on Drupal.org right now, you are going to get much, much better results. Uh, we did a whole bunch of uh, tuning to the solar engine and uh, did some elevations that uh, make exact title matches show up a little bit better. So now if you go in there and you plug in a module name or a theme name or an organization name, um, you can be almost assured it's going to hit in the top page of results. We have a few more changes that are coming in that uh, space over the next um, 
month or two. Uh, but we're all very excited about how much we were able to improve that in a relatively short period of time. Um, another big focus for this last quarter has been content strategy. Uh, many of you know that we did a, a, a hum huge uh, content strategy project over the last year uh, where we've outlined everything that Drupal.org is going to become from all the different content types and how we need them to uh, um, address the use cases that our users have. And the one that we've been focused on for the last quarter with the documentation working group has been um, documentation improvements and spe specifically the features around that community contributed documentation on Drupal.org. Uh, we've got some exciting changes coming in that space, including notifications associated with documentation so that people can see whenever documentation is changing so they can uh, keep up to date on it a little bit better. Um, and also some um, improvements about how we communicate about documentation pages themselves. So basically providing a chat functionality or a, a, a comment functionality on documentation that works a little bit similar to what Wikipedia does with their, their talk tabs. Um, we think this is going to be a huge improvement. Um, can't wait to get it uh, launched, and that's coming very, very soon. Holly, go ahead and hit the next slide. Um, the other big thing that we were focused on, um, and, and this probably was the lion's share of our time, uh, was removing blockers to Drupal 8. Um, Holly mentioned earlier the, the Drupal CI improvements, and for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, Drupal CI is our continuous integration a testing platform. Every single time a patch is committed uh, to core, we run a series of tests. Or I, I should say every time a patch is uploaded to an issue in the core issue queue, we run tests. And basically what those tests do is they give the core maintainers a sense of whether or not that code is safe to commit into uh, the main branch and actually become a part of Drupal 8 core. Um, by getting those tests to perform a lot faster and by getting them more accurate and by doing some tweaks that were kind of influenced by what the core maintainers needed, uh, we were able to directly impact the speed and velocity of the project getting out. And this was uh, a really important way for us to spend our time, but I think it's also given us uh, a lot of key insights into what is really important for building open source code that is as vast and complex as Drupal. The other big item that we worked on was localized.drupal.org. Uh, that was upgraded during Q3. Um, we now have the, the integration with Drupal 8 that was a, a little bit of a blocker coming up to the release candidate. Um, that's now working the way we need it to work. Um, you can now install uh, several different languages directly from the uh, install process of Drupal 8, which is, was one of the key things that we wanted to be able to accomplish in Drupal 8. Um, and so that was a big part of the work for this quarter. There's still a little bit left to do there, but uh, we're excited, um, totally on track for having full localization integration for, for Drupal 8 and, and being the performance tool for delivering it to a global audience that needs to be. Go ahead, Holly. Um, so what you're seeing here was the big news that we announced at uh, DrupalCon. Um, we were able to squeeze in a bit of work on our marketplace and make a key change that has been talked about since, um, frankly, since well before uh, Dries' Amsterdam keynote about community contribution and tending to community commons. Um, what we've done here is we've taken the concept of issue credits, which we've been tracking now for, um, we're going on about six, seven months of, of fully tracking issue credits. Um, and what we do with issue credits is every time a contributor does something in the issue queue, they have an opportunity to say that that act of reviewing something or providing a design mock-up or contributing code was made possible by an employer, so the organization that employed them, or by a customer, which might be the organization that paid them to do the change. And what this allows us to see is how organizations have been involved in the process of solving issues on Drupal.org. Credits are then awarded by the maintainer of the issue queue. So if the, the project is core, then it's going to be core maintainers awarding those credits, very similar to commit credits. If it's a uh, module that's maintained uh, as a contrib module, then that contrib module maintainer has that same ability. When they close an issue, and when the issue is marked as closed fixed, um, that closed fixed accomplishment uh, triggers the issue credit being associated with the individual who was involved and also with the organizations that they attributed. So this is um, this has been great. We, we show the marketplace ordered by 
issue credits issued in the last 90 days. And the reason why we do that is we want to give people an opportunity to move up the list. It's not a, a permanent all-time list where um, we're, you're just seeing your total issue credits all times. It's what have you done in the last 90 days to really move Drupal forward. And right now that's very much skewed towards Drupal core, but we expect as Drupal 8 comes out and everybody starts porting their modules to uh, to Drupal 8 or their themes to Drupal 8, uh, we expect that to change a little bit and it, it's going to shift a little bit towards contrib and we're going to be able to see how those organizations are contributing in that space. Uh, the secondary sort on this page is uh, an, an attempt to highlight those of you who are supporting partners, uh, which should be all of you on this call, because um, we really want to highlight the fact that you are contributing to Drupal.org to make it better. Um, you're providing us the funding that allows us to do all this great work. And so, Holly, next slide, please. I, uh, I just want to say thank you, because um, I, I think it's your generous support that is making my entire team possible and allowing us to uh, speed up the processes of co uh, community contribution um, and to do the things that uh, we need to do from a strategic standpoint on Drupal.org to be um, viable as a long-term open source project. If you want to see what's coming next, uh, please go to Drupal.org slash roadmap. Uh, we have our prioritized list of features that we're planning on working on next, and feel free to have your developers jump in and um, give a hand. Um, and also comment on the things that you feel should be higher on the list. Uh, weigh in with your feedback, because that's how we know the things that are resonating best with the community. So thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, lots of exciting changes there. So uh, if you have uh, questions about the, uh, the, the issue credits um, and the marketplace ordering, definitely feel free to let us know, but we're excited to be able to show that, uh, show that contribution in marketplace and bring some more, bring some more order to the, to the uh, listing of companies there, uh, you know, based on the, what the community values. So. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the opportunities for outreach on Drupal.org and in our Drupal universe. So, Carrie, if you are still alive and not <laughs> suffering from your cold, it's great to have you. I am alive still. Thanks, Holly. Thanks. <laughs> um, so to start, I just wanted to give a quick refresh of our new digital ad products that we launched throughout the year on Drupal.org. Um, in addition to traditional display banners, we do offer dedicated email campaigns, a homepage sponsorship opportunity. Uh, we launched the new Try Drupal program back in April, which allows users to try a free demo of Drupal, and it's supported by our premium hosting partners. We have marketplace listings for hosting and supporting technologies. Um, as well as Drupal.org audience retargeting, which allows advertisers to reach the Drupal.org audience programmatically while they visit other websites. And then moving on to some new opportunities that we're working on more recently. Um, we've developed these new Community Connect programs designed with hosting and supporting technology companies in mind, um, really to help bring new companies further into the fold of the community. The first one we're calling Partner Connect, which was designed for third-party software companies that are looking to integrate with the, with the Drupal community. And really, a well-developed and maintained module is fundamental to doing so. Um, so these companies may not have a Drupal module yet, uh, so we can provide matchmaking services and help notify shops that specialize in third-party integrations when new RFPs become available. That's really the first step. Um, companies who have new, new modules or might have existing modules still want to want help educating the community about their technology or any upgrades. Um, so the program does offer visibility to the community via display banners on Drupal.org, through marketplace listings, and through promote promoted educational videos. Um, and just a quick side note, if you are a shop that specializes in third-party integrations and you do want to participate in the program, um, please see your account rep about how to go about doing that. The next new Connect program we're calling Drupal Camp Connect, uh, which was created for partners who want to support local camps but really need help identifying and managing you know, the 40 plus individual camps that are happening worldwide. Uh, the association will help facilitate sponsorships with camps and act as the main point of contact for sale and billing. Um, we're 
essentially trying to help camps gain reach into new customers. So we're not really involved in the event itself other than helping with the sale. Uh, camps can choose to opt in and most camps that we talked to in Q4 were really, really excited about this opportunity and um, you know, really looking for the extra support. Um, so knowing that, we do have a beta program running now to help camps that are happening in Q4. Um, again, if you're interested in testing that out with us, you can see your account rep for more details. And lastly, some quick Drupal jobs updates. It's been a little over a year since we launched the site back in August 2014. And since then, we've seen a lot of really great organic growth. We average about 16,000 visits a month. Um, we have over 1,500 job seeker profiles. Um, and we've been getting a lot of really good feedback from employers who are using the site. We've had over 2,600 job postings since the launch. You may or may not already be aware of some of the feature improvements that we launched this year, um, including job email notifications um, that allow seekers to set up notifications based on their search preferences, as well as a featured company profile for subscription customers to get some extra visibility. Um, the association is continuing to focus on some new feature improvements moving into 2016. Uh, the first of many new updates uh, aims to improve job description content. So we've been surveying job seekers to try and identify what really motivates them to apply for a job, and we're, we're working those findings into help text that an employer can use while they're creating the job description on the site. Um, so stay tuned for a lot more updates there, and thank you again. We really appreciate your support. Thanks, Gary. Triple jobs. All right. Um, oh, I forgot about this part. <laughs> um, good. So I think, uh, Phil, if you want to talk about uh, some of our European events, I've got you unmuted. Okay, hang on a second. <laughs> It's always exciting when we remember. There's so much stuff. That's the good news, right? Hey there, can you hear me? You are a little faint, but I think if you speak up, you'll be fine. OK, sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, um, sorry, I think I'm coming down with the uh, Drupal Association cold. So yeah, we did a uh, an event in um, in uh, Cologne, Germany. That was De Mexico. Um, mixed success, mixed results. I think um, we're still working through kind of a post mortem on that and uh, and uh, ways that we can improve for future events. Um, and then uh, next up, uh, Festival Marketing, a much different event. Um, uh, very marketing focused. A lot of uh, marketing. Um, attendees and we're still kind of hammering out the details on that working with um, its e-consultancy I believe that's putting that on and an agency that will be putting the booth together for us there so that's kind of the update on that one done and one to come thanks Phil yeah so that um, this part is uh, these uh, European events have been a, an experiment this year to figure out if we can help the community promote Drupal more generally um, so that they can go to the events and represent Drupal and not just represent um, their own company and see what that does for the project um, the De Mexico event was the first uh, first one again in September uh, November will be in um, in London for Festival of Marketing, um, and that uh, booth is sure, uh, definitely looking like it's going to be a ton of fun. Obviously, we have a Lego theme, um, and, and uh, I think the booth is going to look really fantastic, plus the fact that we'll have lots of fun um, Legos to play with while we're there as well. Um, and if you are interested in being at Festival of Marketing and one of the um, few uh, sponsors that gets to join us there because it is a limited number. I think we have just one or two spots left um, and Johanna is a person that you can talk to about those. Um, and uh, I think it, um, Phil, let me, sorry I didn't see these slides yesterday Phil so I apologize um, but let me, um, let me just uh, let you finish up with some of the other uh, marketing related news. 
Yeah, so the Drupal newsletter is still going strong. Um, up to, I think it's actually up to about 35,000 subscribers right now, so that's good news. We're continuing to grow. Um, we've seen kind of a flattening out on open rates, and so Bradley's doing some um, investigation into what we can do to get those open rates to, to continue to grow or at least improve um, incrementally. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, the newsletter seems to be pretty well received. Um, and even though I say the open rates are low, they're 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 good for any email campaigns. So, um, but we just would like to see them be a little bit stronger. Gotcha, great. And that's it, I think. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and walk us through um, our last bit of news here. Thanks, Phil. Which is a Drupal 8 release candidate. So if you missed it. Uh, Dries announced in Barcelona that the intent is to release a candidate, to release a release candidate, super redundant, <laughs> to get a release candidate out the door, let's do it that way, uh, today uh, on October 7th. It is October 7th, right? Get confused. Um, uh, so we're, pre we're preparing for, for that, um, and all systems look good so far, so we'll see what happens, but we should be very close right in this pocket. Um, so the association is definitely um, helping uh, manage their communications around that process, um, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you and, and thank um, uh, Brad and Phil who helped put uh, this deck together. We talked about this a little bit in Barcelona, um, but as, as a supporting partners, uh, I think you guys have lots of great ways to key in here, so I want to make sure that you guys saw this content. So, with our release candidate almost here, um, you know, we have lots that we want to accomplish when the release comes out. Obviously, we want to celebrate the part where we got to a release candidate. That's very, that's very big, right? Um, it's it's not a full release, but this is a huge step for us. Um, and we have to also get the community ready for the release itself. So this release candidate window, we have a few things that we want to accomplish um, and big big ideas that we want everyone to, to key in on. So these are the key messages that we're going to be communicating throughout this release candidate phase. So first, you know, it's here and you can build with it. Um, we need you to build with it, in fact. Um, and when you do, it's going to be a better Drupal than ever. Um, it's going to help you make better things. Um, and that people are already doing great things with it. That we do have sites on Drupal 8 now. Um, if you work with the release candidate, you're going to be um, in, you know, joining good company. Um, and that, you know, the momentum is only going to grow from here. That even more people are planning to use Drupal 8. So we're asking you to try it out and tell other people about it. So these are our key messages in this release candidate phase. Um, and we are thinking about four kinds of content as the avenue for um, getting these messages out the door. So we're using um, the um, ARC format uh, for communication, so awareness building, research and education, comparison and validation, and choice. All right, this is how people make decisions. First we make them aware, help them understand what the product is, compare it to other tools out there, um, and get them then into the choice phase. So you can see how our big ideas line up with the kinds of content that we are creating here. This was our, our roadmap uh, internally. So we're going to be using different kinds of initiatives based on each kind of content and the messages that go around it. Um, so we're going to be really focused on awareness and choice. So the it's here idea, um, we'll be getting that out uh, by helping to put a, a news article up on Drupal.org, also on ADO, uh, updates across all the Drupal social channels, out in our email newsletters, uh, and we'll be doing some specific targeted emails as well. That general message, the release candidates here, you know, go check it out. So uh, we'll also be focused on the choice message, the try it out and tell other people about it. And so we'll have lots of download D8 calls to action in all those channels, but also all over Drupal.org um, and other places as well. So that's where the association is going to focus. Those are the places where we have um, the most direct access um, and we have resources to put that, the messaging into play. But as always, Drupal is a community project, and so we need to get the community, and this is where you come in, um, involved to help us share um, those ideas and others, right? So in particular from the community, we are looking to curate and then highlight um, contributions um, you know, of all of these kinds. Well, you know, um, we are looking for blog posts 
and tutorials, and if you can do demo GIFs, right? Like, oh, hey, check it out. Here's the new, um, here's the new WYSIWYG editor, and look what I can do with inline editing, right? Or um, videos. Ah, I'm, I am. Here's how the new um, content, er, sorry, configuration management system works, right? Um, any kinds of case studies from clients that you're working with that are already using Drupal 8, um, webinars that you're doing, we want to collect all those and make sure that we're highlighting them in all the appropriate places and channels that we have. Um, so, um, in particular, you know, we want the, that content, all of those pieces of content that you might be creating to focus on the research and education and comparison and validation areas. So again, what that looks like is um, here in our ARC format, um, we're looking for stuff that helps us with the big ideas about why Drupal is better than ever, um, things that show us that people are working with it right now, um, that even more people are planning to engage with it, um, and how it will help users uh, create a better web experience for their, uh, their organization, right? So uh, content that relates to this research and education and comparison and validation area, this is stuff that we really need the community's help to get out into the world. So we want to work together around it. Um, so how do we plan to do it? A uh, couple of things. We know you've already got great content out there. Um, and if you can uh, use the hashtag Drupal8RC1 in any social channel, we'll be collecting that content up um, and helping to highlight it through our networks again. Um, and also the made with D8 hashtag. So if you have projects that have been built on D8, I would definitely like to see those. Um, and again, we'll be scanning social media to find those, uh, find content with that hashtag that we can highlight in all of our channels. Um, and in fact, uh, if you take it a step further with your case studies, um, we've actually been collecting those um, on the on Drupal.org itself. Um, so you can share some case study details there. That'd be very helpful. Um, and again, any Drupal.org content, uh, so you might, you might share on social media, but you can also tag Drupal.org content with Drupal 8 RC1 uh, if you're creating content on the site there. That'll help us pull that in as well. If you, uh, if you end up with questions or any, any media, um, we certainly want you to talk to the media, but uh, also know that there will be an announcement on the news section of Drupal.org, so just at the home page, um, there's a a news area. Um, that's where the main announcement will be. So, you know, please feel free to direct the media to that main um, announcement for details as well. And we are definitely looking for translations of material. <laughs> so, all of the content that we put out, including that news announcement, um, uh, all the content that we put out on Drupal.org is licensed with a Creative Commons license. So feel free to grab it, and if you are working in a multilingual environment and can translate that um, information, we would love to have that translation so that we can, uh, you know, share the message of Drupal across the entire globe. It's another place to help. Um, and then as we move into the full release, um, we know that one of the things the communities definitely want to do is have a big worldwide party. So if you're thinking about hosting a launch party just for your office, for your community, for your city, for your country, um, you know, definitely share that with us. Um, we want to collect those launch party stories, um, highlight them on the website, and make sure that your community knows about the party that you're throwing um, so we can help spread the word about that. So there's a URL you can go to to help spread the word as well. And, of course, testing RC1, right? When that comes out, the best thing that we can all do is um, start using RC1 and finding issues so that uh, we can make sure that when we get to the full release, it is in the best shape that it can be. So that's a summary of what we are up to and how we hope that you can help us get involved. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see that in the next day or two, or moments even, in the next moment or two. <laughs> Um, so that's, uh, that's all the updates from us. Um, I haven't seen any questions. Oh, Anja, it looks like, um, Anya, you have a question. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you just to make sure, because I don't see it in the questions area. Ah, you want to offer translation services. I see. Gotcha. Excellent. 
Um, I, mean, I will put you um, in contact with the right person um, after the webinar so that we can um, get you guys all connected. Um, so thanks for, thanks for making that offer. Um, excellent. Uh, so let's see, where was I? Oh, so those are, those are all the updates. That's all the news that's fit to print, as they used to say when we printed news. Um, but uh, we definitely don't want the conversation to end. Um, feel free to let us know what you need. You can email um, anyone that you work with here at the association. Feel free to reach out to me, um, Holly, as well. Uh, but uh, also, just know you can, um, you know, keep in, keep updated with the uh, association on our blog. We've got a newsletter that goes out twice a month. Um, we also have our board meetings, which are actually on the third Wednesday. And I always forget to update that slide, so I apologize. But they are the third Wednesday of each month at noon Pacific. Um, follow us on Twitter at DrupalSos. Um, and uh, if you do have uh, questions about uh, any of the advertising or outreach opportunities we talked about today, or if you have questions about your current programs, definitely feel free to reach out to your account managers, Jenner, Johanna, and Mark. They're all awesome people. Um, and just again, thank you so much for all your support and for being here on this call today to, to learn even more. So look forward to talking to you the next time.